happen. So I think it's time for us to go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome. This is our first 1905 upgrade webinar for patrons in circulation. And I have with me the two other amazing members of the education team, Andrew and Kelly. So we're gonna just go ahead and focus on all of this. Um, Yes, Heather, that, that's why I said I, I, I'm still working on my second cup. I should have drunk faster. Uh, <laughs> so we are going to go ahead and get started. So a lot of fun things in circulation for us to be looking at. So um, a couple of these are things that we can't show. So we're going to go ahead and just talk about them. One of the first ones is there is now bug 20436 has been pushed. And that is the ability to specify item types for the long overdue cron. So now you have a lot of options as far as whether items, item types are or are not included in the cron jobs for the long overdue. So it's not just set to the one um, item type, the one everything anymore. You can go ahead and separate it out. So if that is something that does appeal to you, let us know. If you're one of our partners, obviously go ahead and open a ticket. Um, but what you could do, so an example that we've seen from other partners is that maybe I don't want my DVDs going long overdue at the same 52 days that my books do. Maybe I want those to go long overdue lost um, much earlier. And so we now have that ability to go ahead and set that up and make those changes in your con. So very excited for that one. Um, our next feature has been sponsored by Huntsville Madison County Public Library. And this is the ability to have rental fees based on time periods. So for those libraries that do use rental fees, before you just had the one option where you had to um, just charge a flat rental fee. It was, you know, for that, for however long it checks out, you didn't have any choices. Now you have a couple of additional choices. These are defined in your item types section. So as you come into your item types, you will see that there's a, a two additional columns. Um, so we have our standard rental charge, which discharges a flat fee um, for no matter how long your circulation period is. And then we have our daily rental charge and our hourly rental charge. So if you prefer now, you could have it charged by day um, and that will match up to whatever that does check out for, or you can go ahead and have it for the hourly rental charge. Um, so something you do want to make sure of is that you need to set either a daily or an hourly charge. You don't want to have both. And you want to make sure that your charge matches up with your circulation rules. So if you are, um, if your circulation rules for DVDs is seven days, then you want to go ahead and have your rental set to, set to days also, not hours. So make sure you have those matching. A couple things to be aware of. The patron is charged the full amount of the rental upon checkout. So if I checked out a game, um, for four hours, I would be charged that $2 off the bat. I do not get a refund as a patron if I return it early. So just kind of be aware of those sorts of things. <clears throat> so for instance, let's go ahead. We can see that we have our DVDs here that are set for a dollar. Let me go ahead and check something out. See how bad Andrew's account is. Oh, he's good. We can go ahead and check something out to him. So if I go ahead and check out this DVD, nope, let's try that again. We don't want to check out our drive link. We want to check out barcode. There we go. Okay, so you'll see he immediately has been assessed that $3 fee for that checkout of the DVD, which is three days. So just be aware that that does check out instantly and does charge that or charges that patron instantly. Okay. All right. So next up, we have a couple, as we referred yesterday, if you were in the what's new, we have a couple of new um, enhancements that can be a little scary. So we do need to go ahead and just kind of let y'all know about these. This next one is called Allow Automatic Update of Location on Check-In. And this has been sponsored by the Arcadia Public Library, the Middletown Township Public Library, and Round Rock Public Library. Now, if any of y'all out there use the processing to cart or the cart to shelf, pay attention. Those two system preferences are going away. Everything will now be contained in this one system preference called update item location on check-in. So update item location. So this is a new system preference and you will need to go ahead and make sure that it is set up properly. Now we have done some testing and have determined that anything that you have in your 
cart to shelf um, and in your processing to cart or um, things like that will carry over and automatically populate in the system preference. But it's always a really good idea to go ahead and verify that on day one to make sure that, that does work. Okay. There's a lot of text here. Um, basically what happens is that the existing functionality for all items in the processing cart um, is preserved to the be returned where it's supposed to go and any items issued from the cart location will go ahead and be returned to their permanent location also. So the functionality is going to happen the same way, it's just in a different location. Now, if you do not use the cart to shelf, or you do not use um, the process shelf, you have a few other options in here. And you can kind of see some of these examples. Um, the original enhancement was requested for displays. So for instance, if I go ahead and mark a whole bunch of things on, a whole bunch of my fiction books on display, when those items are checked back in, that display tag will come off of them and they will be set back to fiction. Okay, so kind of some exciting things that we can do in here. And to do that, it would just be something simple like display. And then it's uh, colon space fic. And so what that's going to do is anything that's marked as a shelving location of display, once it's checked back in, will go back to fiction. Now, it, only, it does not read rules. So if I did something like display non-fic, that's not going to work. Okay, so it does have to be within that one framework. There are so are ones though that you could use blank. So if you don't necessarily always use shelving locations, but want to use it for shelf for a display functionality, you could go ahead and just set one up that is display colon blank. And that will go ahead and clear that display shelving location off of that item. It does not replace any other shelving locations, so just kind of be aware of that one. Um, but the big change really is the process and the cart functionalities, and that's what you need to go ahead and take a look at. Um, so, but if you do want to use this for displays and things like that, you can. Just be aware that you can't go ahead um, and mix your displays because it's not going to go ahead and read those as it comes back. Um, there are other functionalities that you can use for that sort of thing. Let us know if you are interested in that. Um, McKenny has written an amazing overlay that uses the course reserves for those sorts of things that does revert those back. But just kind of be aware of this one. Um, this all is a one to be aware of. Um, it overrides everything. So it doesn't matter if it's the 15th rule in line, if Koha finds that all function, it's going to go ahead and change everything that comes in. So just kind of be aware of those as we go through. Okay. All right. Um, this next one is another one that's caused a little bit of concern among some of our partners. Um, just be aware that this is a system preference, so you don't have to worry. If you don't want to use it, it's not a big deal. Um, this is sponsored by the Round Rock Public Library, and this is bug 17171, which allows items to be issued that are currently checked out without having to click on that little button that says, yes, I know this item was checked out. Go ahead and check it out again anyways. Um, so this is called Auto Return Checked Out Items. This is another one of those head scratching system preferences that you have to think through to figure out whether or not this is set the way that you want it to. Um, so ours is set to don't require librarians to manually confirm a checkout when the item is already checked out. So that means I will not get that yellow pop-up box that says this item has been checked, this item's already checked out. If I, what I think, turn it on, it does require you to check it out, but it's actually the other way around. So just think about it. And probably the easiest way to think about this is, do you or don't you want to get that yellow pop-up box that you have to click? That's probably going to be the most direct way to figure out or to remember which way you want to have that set. So we do have ours on as don't. And what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and check out some items and show you some of the different behaviors. I'm so, glad you feel the same way, Don, because I was talking it, about it yesterday out loud, and I'm like, is this, is this just confusing for me? <laughs> yeah, it is. So Andrew is our, our, our database guru backside sort of thing, and so he was looking at that, um, and we were trying to figure out how many libraries are using certain things and things like that, and it was another one of those system preferences where it was like, okay, well, they have it set to yes, but yes actually means no. Um, and so there's a lot of those that are kind of confusing. So don't feel bad if you can't keep up because we can't either. So, okay. <laughs> Donna, so to be clear, the default, when you get 1905, it will not, 
be turned on. Correct. The default will be do, which means the behavior does not change from what you're dealing with right now. You will get that yellow pop-up box that you have to click on. Clear as mud, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've, we've tried to make sure that any of these changes are not going to automatically change how you do things now. Um, so we're, we're, we're trying to make sure that everything is set so that nothing changes. You have to go in there and actually turn things on. Um, and so what we really try to do is make sure that, that those workflows don't change. You physically have to do something. So, Okay, so checking out to Bob Belcher. This is what you will see now, is you will just get this yellow, you do get a yellow box, box, but there's nothing that you do with it. It says item was checked out and was returned automatically. This is a little different than the boxes that we typically get because there is no link that I can right click on and open in a new window and come back and check on Hugo's account later. Um, so just kind of be aware of that one. It just gives you that notice that says, hey, this happened, okay? Now, if we check in something that has a hold on, or check out something that has a hold on it, okay, you still do get that pop-up box that says, hey, this item is on hold, and you have your standard responses for those. So that is still there. Um, you also do get the other second box that says this was returned automatically, so it's off of Hugo's account, but it will not check out to Bob until I continue like I normally do. Um, and click that box, okay. Yeah, Christopher, that is a very confusing screen. <laughs> and then the last one, if I have a lost item, so we don't get a yellow box, we get a blue box that just says this item has been lost and it has a, stat and it has a status of lost. Um, again, no barcode, no patron link, no notification if anything was refunded or not. So just be aware that this will help in a lot of situations, but you do need to make sure that your staff are aware that they need to kind of pay attention to some of the stuff because um, there's not you're not you're not getting a lot of that information that we're used to getting. Okay. Hey Donna, right. while you're, Donna, while you're still on the screen, can you just alert them to that checked out box that we filed a bug for? I was hoping nobody was going to notice that. <laughs> uh -huh. Might as well just be honest. Um, so you can see down here where we have our checked out, it usually tells us the title of the item that we've checked out. This is our confirmation that that did scan properly. Right now there is an issue that it is only showing us the barcode and the due date. It's not actually showing us the title. We do have a bug filed. I believe it's already been fixed. Um, it's just waiting for, I think, the QA to be pushed. So when you all get your version or your upgrade of 1905, um, it should be in there and fixed for that one. So. Okay. Hey, Donna. Yes. Do you mind popping over to the self checkout module? Because I feel like we talked about this the other two, but there are still questions about this and what it ha what happens with it when you check it out on self checkout. I would be happy to. I don't have the link. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> you can pop me the link, we can do that. Yes. <laughs> Here. I'm, I don't know if Andrew's quicker than me. Is it a competition, Andrew? Um, I was looking for the number for the checked out message. So. Okay. Good, so we're both Here. doing something different. Okay, <laughs> okay hold on. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so here's the link. I will put it in Slack. That helps. Perfect. Okay. Let me do Donna B. I should be able to get that one. Andrew. There we go, okay. So now if I go ahead and click at that item that has a hold on it. So you do get that um, 
Hold on, yeah. let me clear Andrew's fine, just to be sure. I was gonna say, yeah, that $3 fine, you can ignore that line. You typically would only see, sorry, this item cannot be checked out at this station. Let me go back to his summary. Okay. I'm making, I'm paying his thing. Hopefully that doesn't mess you up. Okay, he's all set. Okay. Three, nine, one, four, five. So there we go. So item cannot be checked out. This item is on hold for another patron. So it does block those at the self check units. Um, my understanding of why that is blocked at self checkout is because it, it has a hold on it and it's not supposed to be checked out. I'm wondering though if you have that system preference turned to allow self-check that are on hold for other patrons. I can't think of that exact. Yeah, I'm looking it up. But that should go ahead and, and override that if you if you want to be able to do that. Okay, I just set it to allow. Do you want to try again? So let me try again. That's allow items on hold, check out, self, C, SCO. Okay. You so, got it. Oh! <laughs> Andrew's been playing with audio alerts. Um, so yes, if you do turn that uh, system preference to allow items that are on hold for other people to be checked out at self-checkout, it does not block your workflow. Um, patrons are able to still check something out that is checked out to someone else and on hold. Okay. All right. Don't you just love that flexibility in Koha that in seconds we can change those and make it work and not work and things like that? I think that's fantastic. I love that. Okay. Um. Christopher had one further question about that bug for the missing title. Mm -hmm. um, that is, as, as I understand it, impacting all checkouts. Yes. It has nothing to do with the system preference we were showing. But uh, the fix on that bug is already pushed to master. So by the time any of you are, well, it's pushed to 1911. I imagine it will get back pretty quickly. Yeah. So I'd be surprised if you all got 1905 with that bug still in it. Okay, so while we are here <clears throat> playing with different functionalities and circulation, so there is now another new functionality. It's called ability to renew items on hold with override. And again, these do have system preference, or excuse me, permissions that go with them. So if your staff have their appropriate permissions and we do have this ability set up, um, it is auto renewal on hold override is the system preference. So two places you're gonna run into it. One is the renew functionality here. So if a patron brings those books in and says, I want to renew them, I go ahead and scan that item and I get a pop-up box that says, I cannot renew this item, it's on hold for another patron. Now, before you didn't have an option, but now I do. I can go ahead and renew that. I also can specify the renewal date. So if I just wanna give them maybe two more days for it, I have that option to be able to go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna give you until the 12th. And then I just go ahead and override and renew it. And then that item has now been renewed for that patron and is now due back on that specific date. So again, a nice little functionality that you do have that ability um, that you can go ahead and renew something that might have a hold on it, okay? The other place that we're gonna go ahead and see this is when we are in our patron records. Okay, under the checkouts table, okay, you will see You'll see that none of these have holds on them because I'm using the wrong patron. Try that again. There we go. You will see that you cannot go ahead and renew those items because those are on hold. When I come down here, I have the override renewal restrictions. When I click that box, I can go ahead and say, I want to go ahead and renew this item. And then I have another date box that pops up and this is the on hold due date so i can specify the renewal just for that item that i'm overriding that hold on um, and again i can give them an extra day an extra two days whatever the case may be um, so you see that in the two different places from the renew functionality on the main search screen and then also within the patrons record you do have those double clicks that you can go ahead and come in there and set those up okay Next up is 
So here's one of the things that, that we all get very excited about at every upgrade is that some of these little things that make us so very happy. We've got a lot of amazing enhancements in here, really big functionalities, but it's some of these little ones that make us really happy. And this is one of those that I absolutely love. Right here, when I'm checking out to a patron, I, now, I have my X where I can go ahead and clear the patron off the screen, but I also have this button now. There's a red printer button. And what that does, you can see the, if you can see the mouse over, it prints the slip and clears the screen. So one click, I can go ahead and print out my patron's receipt and clear that patron off the record. Um, so very exciting that we have that functionality here. Um, and actually we have the amazing person who created this, Christopher Brandon, um, is on the webinar again today. Um, and he's the one that made this happen. So yay, Christopher, thank you. <laughs> um, I am very much a, a um, I'm, I'm very much into privacy for patrons. It's one of my things I, that I always stress. And so this makes it a lot easier. Instead of doing a couple of clicks, I can do one and I'm done. Um, so again, those little things, you do need to have that system preference turned on to make the X show. Um, but as long as that is on, you're good to go and your um, staff will see this print slip and clear screen. The next question that Carolyn has beat me to is, does that print the quick slip? No, it prints the slip. It does not print the quick slip. Um, so you've got a couple of options. Is one is either just, um, uh, actually what I would do is just modify my slip to go ahead and make that print the way the quick slip does. Um, so that is one of the things that it does. It only prints the slip right now. Um, and Kelly, I know, is looking for that system preference to have that turned on. Display clear screen button is a system preference that will go ahead and make these visible. So, okay. Um, the next one is one of those that if you have multiple locations, this is really going to be helpful for you. When an item is, yeah, so Christopher um, brought up a workaround, which is just going to take a little education on your patron, on your staff part, but it's not going to be difficult. Um, reverse the layouts of your slip and your quick slip. And so then when you use that button, it's going to go ahead and print your slip, but it'll have the content of your quick slip. And then if you print quick slip using your drop down, it'll print your slip. That's what I would do. I can see Kelly's head about to explode. <laughs> That's what I would totally do. So, okay. So, with our transfers, if items are lost in transfer, we have a new functionality, 21754, where outstanding transfers are canceled when an item is marked as lost. So we have this book here, the Iron Marshal has been in transit for well over a year. So it has been coming from the East Branch to the West Branch. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and mark that item, not from that screen, I'm going to go ahead and mark that item as lost. And then what it does is it goes ahead and clears that transit status, takes it out of transfers, marks it as lost, and marks the last seen location, the current location, as the library that was coming from. So you don't lose any information. You still know where it was last physically seen and where it's supposed to be, um, but you do now know, you do have that cleared out of your transfer screen. Um, when the transfer is canceled, no, no one is notified um, when that transfer is canceled. Okay. This last one, when you have your check in. So we have often, told folks book drop mode is evil. Um, and we usually hide book drop mode from a lot of sites because it just causes issues with accruing fines and if you're backdating and, and grace periods and all sorts of weird stuff. So basically what Nick Kid Clamp has always told us is book drop mode is evil, don't use it. However, bug 14591 has made book drop mode non-evil. Um, so if it is something you want to be able to start using now, you can. Book drop mode does work with your calendar, so you need to make sure that your calendar has all of its dates on it. Basically what it's going to do is if you check things in using book drop mode, it looks to see when was the last day the library was open. So you do have that ability, or if your staff were just comfortable with going ahead and using the date picker, they can do that also.
I have a question, Donna, but I'm not sure. It's the question is: Is hold still there? Oh, a hold on a can on a tra on a, a canceled transfer. transfer. It it would be. It should be, yeah. Yeah, the hold would not be cleared. Um, mm -hmm. It would just be. It would now show up on one of those reports that says unfillable holds. Yeah, there's nothing there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another thing, another little addition. Um, one of the things that has been continually being developed over the last few releases is the configure columns functionality. And there's some more that are being added there too. Um, so right now, when we go ahead and search for patrons, um, it just shows us this basic information here. Um, again, these are configurable through configure columns. There is now the ability to turn on the phone number for the search history or when you're doing those searches. So I can go to configure columns. It is under circulation and it is under the table borrowers. So not where you would necessarily think to find that one. Da, 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 table borrowers, here we go. And you can see that phone is automatically hidden. I'm gonna go ahead and unhide phone. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Is that a whole new table under columns? Bar it is. Uh, no, it's not. It's not a whole new table. Okay. Yeah, it's not a whole new table. Um, so now when I go into my patrons and search, I do have to scroll. Did I not save that? Okay. It's also possible we don't have phone numbers for most of these patrons too. <laughs> so anyways, configure columns, great new place. Take a look at them. Should be showing. I'm not sure why it's not because it showed it when I tested it. So, okay, moving on. <laughs> um, lockouts. All right, let me, yeah, let's see. She does, this is the thing, Lima Bean does have that. So I'm not sure why she is not showing in there. Yeah. It works, I promise. Hmm. Yeah. Let me double check that I. But I actually set that up right. So configure columns, circulation. Oh. While Donna's doing that, we had a question. Um, there's that little last patron at the top of your screen, Donna. So yes, that was actually something that came in the last upgrade was that that is a system preference that allows you to have that link to go to the last patron you were on. So that is a system preference to turn on or turn off. I think I turned it on yesterday afternoon um, and it, it just kind of hangs out on your screen and brings you back to that last patron. And that system preference is called the last patron I'm assuming, but I'll make sure. And then if you do, and it will follow you until you go into another patron, if you do want to clear it, you can go ahead and use that X to clear that information out there. And that won't show up again until you have another patron record there. Yeah. So it does make it really handy if you're trying to do four things at once and forgot which patron you were dealing with, you can go ahead and get back to that patron. Okay. So another functionality, um, if you have the OPAC login attempts max preference set, um, when a patron over, went over the number of um, attempts to log into the OPAC, it does block their account. There was no way for you to really know that before from the staff side, so it was very confusing. There is now, the functionality has been added that on that detail screen of that patron account, 
it does say account has been locked. It only shows on the details. It does not show on the checkout screen. So if a patron comes in and says, I can't log into the OPAC, just going into the checkout is not gonna do anything. You do need to look at that details section. It does not stop the patrons from checking things out, anything like that. It just stops them from being able to log into the OPAC. The way that this is cleared, you're gonna go ahead and click on that change password button. Because I know that that is the only way anybody ever changes the password. You never go into the edit screens and do that, right? Everybody always uses the change password button. <laughs> is that was that too subtle of a hint okay you know donna I, I i hate to be a dissenting voice but i think our our two big reasons to tell people to always use that button have, have been erased i know but i still want to tell them to use that button <laughs> it's less clicks it gets you right there you don't have to scroll it's it's a shortcut <laughs> it's true yeah, what Andrew is referring to is before, um, and we haven't covered this in really any of our webinars so far, before if you didn't use that change password button, it did not record in the logs that that was changed. Now it does without using that change password, but we're still going to have everyone use change password. <laughs> okay. Um, another nice functionality with our new patrons now if y'all are using the cities and towns, which is really nice if it, if it works for you. Um, obviously with huge libraries, it may not work because your list of cities and towns will probably be in the 400s, but for the other smaller libraries, it does help a lot. As you come down here, we've always had the functionality here under our city and state that we can go ahead and choose and, and have that information automatically populated. What's really exciting now is that that carries through to all of the addresses. So under alternate address, I can still use that. And under alternate contact, I can use that. So that cities and towns functionality has been spread across all of the address functions when you are registering a patron. Um, so that's a really nice feature to be able to go ahead and use that one. While we're on this screen, um, this is something that's probably not gonna impress many people because it's already there. Um, so this is something that we've done through jQuery for a lot of our, our users already, um, which is putting a note in there that the SMS number should be formatted in a specific way. This is now in here permanently and through Koha, so that jQuery is not needed anymore. It lets patrons know, um, or lets staff know on the staff side and patrons on the OPAC that the SMS number should just be numbers, no punctuation or anything like that. Um, so that's a nice little plus there. So. Okay. Oh, Andrew, I'm getting a direct question to you. Ooh. Andrew's in trouble. <laughs> Andrew, is the check-in module fixed in this version for those who couldn't click through? I am 100% blanking on what you mean. Sorry, Christopher, I, I, that rings no bells for me. So I actually did the circulation notes and I remember something vaguely in there um, <clears throat> about that being corrected, but we'll follow up on that one because it was one of those that I'm like, now nah, we don't need to talk about this. Um, but I think that that has been fixed, Christopher. We'll double check though. Okay, um, so this next one is, is gonna make some folks very confused. Um, but it's okay, we're here for you. We can get through this together. This is bug 20837. Can item be reserved should follow the reserves control branch and not the circ control. Now for most of you all that makes absolutely no sense. But basically it was one of those, um, we wanna call it a well-known secret that it didn't work the way that it was supposed to in our circulation rules. Um, so this patch corrects the behavior of the, of the reserves or the hold rules so that they match your system preference descriptions. Um, some of y'all may experience some um, unexpected behavior when this starts. Um, we do have a blog post um, that you wanna definitely take a look at that one um, and let everybody you know, check your sites. Oops, I'm trying to get the link for you. Um, but we do have a really good blog post that I believe Andrew wrote, didn't he, on this one. Um, so this is the holds rules changes. So just be aware of this one, um, and you may want to double check your system preferences in your site before 1905, um, just to know if you're going to experience any 
changes. And again, if you have questions, please just open a ticket, let us know, and we can go ahead and walk through that with you and make sure everything's going to be set. So just kind of be aware of that one. Um, that blog post includes a, a very clear, like, four question, do you do this, this, and this? If, if you answer all those questions, no, then it does not apply to you at all, and you can just forget about it, which is good news. It should be a relatively small list of people. And our page is not being found. Uh oh. Okay, I'm pinging. I'm pinging somebody about that. Okay. Okay. Um, so this next one. 22330 oh, is another one that we really can't show you. It's just one that you need, to, if you are a multi branch location, you need to be aware of this one. Um, transfer limits should be respected for placing holds. So basically, what this is going to do is it's going to look at your transfer limits when, you're, when you are placing holds. If your staff override a transfer limit to place a hold, so for instance, if Library A has something that does not transfer to Library B, I'm at Library A. I go ahead and place that hold anyways, that hold will never show for patron for library B. Okay. So just be aware of this. If you're a multi-branch location and um, if you have transfer limits set up, you need to take a look at this one um, and be aware of that. So it's going to stop you from, it's going to give you a warning. If staff have the right permissions, they can override it. Um, but that hold will never show up in the holds queue for, for the library. Um, so just kind of be aware of those, okay? All right. Um, this is one that you've probably seen already um, in the OPAC. When you are placing a hold, it now shows you the collection code too. Um, so this was actually pushed in 1811, but folks may not have been aware of that one. Okay, so if I am in the OPAC and I am placing a hold, specifically an item level hold, okay, you will see that that collection code is now showing up in those columns. So again, a little thing, but it, it might help with some of your patrons if you are using collection codes in different ways. I see that Kelly's getting a visit from Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to hop back to the staff client. So the same sort of thing, um, another, another nice little addition. When I am actually looking at my holds tab, <laughs> Tinkerbell really wants your attention, Kelly. <laughs> when I am looking at my holds tab, um, the details column will now display the barcode and when you click on the barcode it actually takes you to that item information. Um, again, it's a little one of those things that folks may not have even noticed. It just is kind of annoying that it wouldn't take you to the right spot. It would take you to the bib record, things like that. So now it takes you to that actual spot in that items information. So again, little one, um, it does go ahead and work for both pending and waiting holds. Um, if they have that barcode. So that is a handy little functionality to have there. Okay, so I'm just curious before we move into this next section, um, either put it in chat or, or however you want to do it. Does, does your library use the functionality of check previous checkouts? Because we kind of have a bet running that we don't think most libraries use this. I'm just curious to see if anybody here today, does your library use the check previous checkouts? Yeah. Check previous checkouts. What that system preference does is if I have, yeah, I agree, Christopher. Um, <laughs> if I have, as a patron, if I have checked out this item before and I check it out again, the staff will get a pop-up box that says, this patron has checked this item out previously. 
Um, if you anonymize, you're probably not using it because it does not work with anonymization. Um, but I'm, I think that most libraries probably do not use it. Um, but if you do, yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty sure that most libraries don't, are not going to be using this one. So, but just be aware of it. Um, if you do have that check previous checkout turned on, um, it will now also warn staff when they're placing a hold that the borrower has already checked that item out for. Um, so typically what I'm going to do, so again, this only works if your patrons are not anonymizing. Um, and, and so just kind of be aware of that when you do have to have that turned on, it does not turn on just for holds. It turns on for both holds and checkout. So again, if we could have one or the other, it would be helpful, but not, it doesn't, it does it for both. So um, if I am working with a patron and they want to place a hold, I'm going to go ahead and place a hold for patron. I get that little warning there that the patron has previously checked out this title. Um, yes, it will work if only some patrons are anonymizing. It just won't work on any of the patrons that have anonymized their reading history. Um, so if you have a mix of patrons, yes, it will work, but um, for anyone that's anonymized, this functionality is not going to work. Okay, um, so you just get a little yellow box that says the patrons previously checked out this title. Um, I, I can see situations where this would be helpful um, in certain libraries, um, but just kind of be aware of that that is a new functionality there. Now the other one that you probably saw in the OPAC when we looked for something Um, this is a huge thing. It's a little change, but it's huge. Um, so now when items are on hold, instead of in the OPAC showing as available, they show as on hold. I'll just pause for a moment and let everyone think about how exciting this is. Um, but so now those items no longer show as available, even though they're sitting on the hold shelf, they show that they are on hold for our patrons too. Yes, I love Christopher's cue the beam of light. Yes, we should have angels and all sorts of singing going on. It's, it's, it's again, one of those little things, but was a, an annoyance for a very long time that has now been fixed. So that is a really exciting functionality with that one. Um, the, um, the check, um, what was it called? Check previous circulation or check previous checkout is a system preference that does need to be turned on um, in the system preferences for that one. Um, and the hold actually looks at the, um, the bib record is what it comes down to. Um, so be aware of that one. So it's not a specific item. It's if that bib record had been checked out before. Okay. Um, another little functionality is with our patrons now when they have suspended a hold this is really just kind of clearing it up and making it a little bit clearer for our when you're looking at a patron record um, is if they have a hold suspended there we go um, you'll see that there is now a column in that holds table for status it tells me if that hold has been suspended or if the item has been trapped but not transferred yet those sorts of things um, so that suspended makes it really clear if that hold has been suspended for a patron yet or not. Okay. Okay. While we're still talking about holds, are holds awaiting pickup? You now have more information on this screen. It does show you the card number with a hot link for that patron. Um, so it now shows that in that screen. Again, might be helpful, might not be. Um, this is another new functionality that's been added in there is that the shelving location has been added to the holds waiting. This one I'm still kind of puzzling about because I'm not sure why um, that would be in there, but it's there. Um, so, but you're, you now have your shelving location showing on your holds waiting, uh, waiting pickup. Okay, we're gonna pull up poor Miss Lima Bean again. So before, there was a tab here that said fines, 
fines is now gone and is now called accounting. So this actually gives a really better description of what that tab is all about. So um, we have, instead of fines, it says accounting. Instead of pay fines, it is now called make a payment. Again, that was kind of confusing for some folks. And then instead of account, it is now called transactions. The content of these have not changed. Um, it still has all of that same information in here. It's just the tabs have been more accurately described as far as what they do. Um, and now that I said that the content hasn't changed, that's not exactly true. There's been additional information included in here. So for instance, on the accounting tab, um, I can see things such as the return date. Um, I can see things such as the barcode and the due date and all of those sorts of things. So there's been a lot more information added here. Um, I also do want to point out that when you have a lost item here, it adds the call number in. Um, so this is just kind of one of those quick things that if you are dealing with a patron um, that says, no, I know that item wasn't lost, you can do a quick shelf check. You don't have to look anything up. That call number is there. But notice it's only showing for those items that are lost, okay? Items that are just overdue, um, those are not showing, or just have fines, those are not showing the call numbers. Um, it is just for the lost, okay? Yes, um, so Chris, you asked a really good question, and this is something that is um, changing with the account line tables and things like that. So this now says fine returned. That means that the item was returned. Um, so as opposed to an accruing fine or something like this, this has now been a fine that has been, um, that item has been returned. Okay, so on this patron here, so say for instance, you know, we have a lot of money due for this one. We're gonna go ahead and pay an amount on here. Um, you'll see that there is now a new section on the payment page where it does designate the change to give. Um, this was actually requested by some libraries. Some libraries are really not going to like this, so it's just kind of one of those things. I know that we do have folks that are working on jQuery to go ahead and hide this already. It's not a system preference. You can't turn it off. Um, but the situation would be this patron owes $46.15. They only want to pay $18.15 of that amount, and then they hand me a $20 bill. If I don't have a cash register at my library, it could be a little challenging for some folks to figure out those calculations, but you can see right here, it does go ahead and tell me the change to give is $1.85. This is not logged. You cannot use this to balance your cash drawers or anything like that. It is purely a display thing that shows right now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say that they paid us in glitter. And I'm going to confirm. Um, and this is a new pop-up box that you do get when you're using this. The amount collected from the patron is higher than the amount to be paid. Give them $1.85. So again, it just kind of gives you another reminder that you do need to go ahead and give them the change. So I'm going to say yes. It goes ahead and makes that payment and we're all set. Okay. So one of the other functionalities that has been added is with our receipts. So if I go ahead and print my receipt right now, there's my receipt view. Okay, this has long been hard coded. We do not have any options as far as being able to make changes to this until now. So now both the invoice and the fee receipts have been made configurable through your notices and slips. So when I go to my tools section and I go to my notices and slips, I have two new notices in here. And that is, where'd they go? Let me just search for them. Account debit and account credit. Okay. Um, so I can now come in here for my fee receipt is the credit and the debit is my invoice receipt. So if I've done a manual invoice or something, but I can come here into my fee receipt, click on print, and I can go ahead using the template toolkit, make modifications to that uh, receipt for what I want it to show. Um, so again, that is something that's kind of nice functionality that you can go ahead and customize your, customize your fee receipts and your invoice. Um, another little thing that's kind of fun 
um, I, I don't want to say it's fun. It was one of those things that we had a lot of comments about that they wish that you could change it. Um, so for Scout Finch, we're going to go ahead and make a payment. This one we're going to go ahead and say was done baked goods. Okay. When I go ahead and log into Scout's account now, I can see in the finds that this description now does whatever I had put in there for, <laughs> Kelly's losing it, whatever I had put in there for that drop down as far as payment type. The previous one, it just, does anyone remember what the previous one did? No? Let me show you. I am loving your description, though. What would it say if you got paid in glitter? <laughs> I didn't come up with anything for that one. I think I was hungry when I did the bait fine. <laughs> when I did the pay fine. Okay, so this is the same account um, in in our current version of eighteen eleven, and it always just said payment thanks, and then the payment type. So that thanks was sometimes a a, a point of contention. Um, so that has now been removed and it does just show, um, oh, let's go ahead and there we go. It does just show whatever you put in there. It does not force that in there. So it's nice that it went ahead and separated those out. Um, so you do have a lot more control over what you want that description to be and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, so the, the part that you don't see, Christine, for Kelly and Tinkerbell is that Kelly just got new furniture and Tinkerbell has apparently decided to make it her own by clawing it up. So she's constantly battling Tinkerbell. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised you didn't get, you didn't stop because I actually jumped. Oh, she muted you. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped up to get her and I was like, oh, I'm not muted. <laughs> <laughs> we heard you clicking at her at one point, so. Okay, getting to the end here. I know, yay, exciting. Um, so this last one is course reserves. And again, this is just kind of a functionality chain, or not a functionality change, it's just a, a visibility in, enhancement. So there's now an improved display of the changed values, and it shows your permanent location instead of cart. That was one of those things that we really had a challenge with too, is that if you were using that uh, cart to shelf functionality, it wouldn't show you the permanent location, it would show you cart, so you really, really didn't know where a lot of this stuff was supposed to go. So again, really neat stuff um, that you can go ahead and see have been enhanced in this course reserves. Again, I know some libraries are using, public libraries are using course reserves for displays, which is another great option for being able to do that. Um, and so now you can go ahead and see, oh, is this the one that Christopher did too? Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Yay, Christopher. Um, so now you can see that when I check in a course reserve item, Okay, it does not say it, it. So here, and this is where it gets a little confusing. Here in the staff client, it does show cart. But when I look at the food, at the course reserves themselves, it shows you the proper location for it. Um, so really kind of cool that, you, you know, when you're looking at your course reserves, trying to figure out where things are, you can go ahead and get that in, in here. So, okay. Um, the last part of this is really just kind of a, a public service announcement. Um, as you all know, Koha has been working on developing an ILL module. Um, there are additional ILL um, functionalities that have been added. We don't think that most of our partners are using it because it's only functioning for Koha to Koha libraries. So we have a few libraries that are kind of testing it out, but it's not widespread. So we didn't want to take up a lot of time talking about those functionalities. But just be aware there are a number of new exciting additions to the ILL module. So, phew got through everything. Hopefully nothing too terribly confusing in all of that. Um, we have just a couple of minutes, so if you have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and post those um, in the chat or the Q&A. <laughs> Thank goodness I wasn't, moder um, I wasn't leading this or Tinkerbell would have been on the ground. That's for sure. <laughs>
Oh. Um, why did Nick think book drama was evil? So it, it was really some interesting situations. For instance, with um, great with uh, grace periods. So if I was using book drop mode and I had a grace period, um, and the patron returned that item within the grace period, they're not supposed to be charged a fine. Book drop mode would actually charge the patron a fine of zero, um, and so it just did some really weird stuff like that. Um, and if you ever took payments on accruing fines and use the book drop mode, you could wind up with the patron being owed a credit. Um, so it just, it, it didn't play nicely with the accounts um, and the, the amounts of fines and stuff like that. So, um, so now we're very happy that it is no longer, uh, no longer evil. Um, invoices are account credit. No, invoices <laughs> are account debit. Invoices are debits fees, or excuse me, payments are credits. Okay, for previous checkout, if we use self-check stations, will the patron see the message? No, that message never shows to the, well, I'll, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna stop talking right there, Mary, because I'm not sure. We're gonna wanna check that um, out on the self-check stations to see if patrons get that message um, that they've checked that item out before. So, it'd be interesting to see, good question. Okay, so I heard a really bad joke today that while we're waiting to see if anyone else types these in. A guy tried to sell me a coffin. I told him it was the last thing I needed. No, I don't get it. Oh, Kelly. I mean, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, all right. I didn't say it was a good joke. Better than some of the ones that we put in that black gives us. Probably, yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us this morning. Um, hopefully, we'll see some of you back this afternoon when Kelly takes over and hopefully has caged Tinkerbell somewhere <laughs> so she doesn't get, get muted um, to go over um, OPAC and public services. Some exciting enhancements, so we're looking forward to it. Thank you, Donna. Thanks, everyone. Bye.